Hey fellas, and welcome back to Quite With A Y. The format for today is actually a little different, like not that you'd be able to tell, but for me as I make it. See, right now is about an hour and a half before Summer Games Fest is supposed to start, where a bunch of games are meant to be announced and I'm shitting my pants in anticipation. Just like these things were made for, I plan on playing a drinking game during it. And the point of me doing this was kind of just to capture my tone before I know what I was gonna get. And recording something now is basically me trying to get what my expectations and kind of person I was before the event, and then I'm gonna record the rest with all my thoughts on the announcements after. That way you guys have a simulated real-time exposure to my degradation and enjoyment, or my optimism going through the roof. In all honesty, it's probably just gonna stay like in the middle. That's where all these things end up, it feels like. It's been hit or miss ever since every company started doing their own presentations whenever they wanted. Okay, yeah, I just watched the press conference and I'm not angry or anything, but God, that was pretty bad. <laughs> I'm gonna be honest, there was like maybe one thing that wasn't a game I was already looking forward to that I was excited to see. There just wasn't a whole lot to chew on here. And I've got some comments about like the formatting of Summer Games Fest in my personal opinion. Not that I'm qualified to speak on it or I know anything, just what I would prefer as a viewing experience. But let me, but first let me uh, talk about the announcements or the things revealed that I genuinely liked. I think the biggest announcement for me was updated information on Lies of P. If you don't know, it's a Souls-like where you literally play as Pinocchio. It's the gameplay you're watching right now because a demo was released in the middle of the conference going on, and I have been looking forward to this game since it got announced at a different event. I forgot when. So I wanted to give it a shot, and I have a few thoughts on it. Graphically, it's fucking gorgeous. The demo, like, didn't run bad at all on my computer. I don't know what settings I was putting it on because I just left it on default. I didn't change anything. But it gives me hope that the launch of the game will be, like, stable, and I hope so. And as someone who's only played a few hours of Dark Souls 1, Bloodborne, and Elden Ring, each. The general feel I got across those games seems to be pretty closely mimicked, or at least is inspiring heavily the way they do combat in Plies of P. I don't know enough about the systems in any FromSoft game to say how similar it actually is. It's just as somebody who is coming into both of these things pretty fresh, it felt like they could have been made, if not by the same studio, by folks who hang around each other in the same genre of game. I, I like the particle effects. Y'all know I'm a sucker for those. You can get me interested in your game just by being very pretty and flashy. We'll get well, That will come back later. But it was done in a way where everything felt satisfying when you poke it and stab it and shit. You'll have to excuse me sucking because I played this game for less than 20 minutes and that's not a reflection on the game. That's just because I wanted to have gameplay for this video that was relevant, but also I really wanted to try it. I think one complaint I have, which might be human error, um, I don't think there's a sprint button. I looked through controls, I just kind of pressed random shit while I was walking around the playable area. I was never able to like increase my speed. All you have is the dodge, which is also a dash. I might just be stupid, but having to walk around at the speed that I was the entire demo through the whole game is, I don't want to say it kills my hype for the game, but I'm worried that it might not go well. At least it might not go a way I like. It might be well designed and I'm just a pussy. Like I was approaching a enemy on a bridge, I think once, and the tension that comes with having to walk up to him while he's not looking there is like of when he's gonna see you which I can appreciate. I see what they're going for and I honestly think I could get used to it if it's like implemented well but this is based off less than 30 minutes of gameplay and me spitballing so take it with a grain of salt. If you want to try the demo I honestly think it's worth the time. I haven't beaten it yet but I plan on doing it tonight. The other thing I can say without a doubt I was excited and happy to see was more Spider-Man 2. It was how I started my PlayStation video despite it being the end of the conference because it was the biggest thing to me. We didn't get nearly as much this time but there were some granules to chew on, like we got more looks at Venom and how big he's gonna be compared to like Miles and Peter. And we also see Miles and Peter fighting Venom together, which is a really interesting dynamic. In the comics, they really don't let Peter Parker get older. Like he's been stuck at max age 30 for decades. He never really got portrayed in a mentor role until Miles Morales got adapted to formats outside of the comics. So not only am I excited that we get a Peter mentor angle that hasn't really been done before and hopefully can give us some new insight into the character and like situations he's put in, but because you established that new dynamic from the start, that there's two Spider-Men and Spider-Man meets Miles early in his career, it gives the writers and the game designers an opportunity to put their own spin on a lot of these classic stories that have been retold and retold. I'm sure there's a way to make those still compelling in a new way without like, going as far away from the source material as adding a new Spider-Man, but I don't care. I love Miles Morales. <laughs> I am so excited to see how this thing plays out. I think this might be the best symbiote storyline we've gotten in any media, but I am also like up my ass as a Spider-Man fan and coming off Spider-Verse, so 
take the bias in. I had a lot to say about the things I liked and not much to say about the things I didn't care for because I didn't really care for them. There's a few things I have further comments on, but let me talk formatting first. I said this in the last video, but I really miss E3, man. Not the organization, not specifically that event, but what E3 allowed to happen consistently every year. If you look at the history and just the way the gaming industry is now, having all three major gaming corporations in one spot revealing their games, willing to directly compete against each other, that's insane that was able to ever get formed in the first place. Like sure, cons even today are still a place where uh, companies will showcase their newest products to insiders or journalists, but E3 became a consumer event a long time ago where you're trying to generate hype among your audience, not amongst journalists or reviewers. And so every part of E3 became a spectacle. The fuck ups, the games that got announced, who won what year. It was like all three companies would have their press conferences within at least a few days of each other. It's been a few years since, so I'm a little rusty on the details, but you could like plan to do something when E3 rolled around, like have friends over for a long weekend or some shit. I personally feel that Summer Games Fest suffers from being such a drawn out event. God bless him. Of all the things Jeff Keighley runs, I think he does the most consistent and spectacular job with the Game Awards. I can't think of a Game Awards in recent memory that I didn't actively enjoy watching, not in an ironic sense, but there were good announcements. I was happy with at least a good chunk of the nominations and wasn't mad at who won for the most part. Gamescom was a complete kind of nothing burger for me and Summer Games Fest is, it's still getting its legs as far as I'm concerned, but I just think because it's spread across two months where you're supposed to be getting announcements all the way through that time, for me personally, it hurts my ability to get excited about this event. Like they have this one big conference that's supposed to be the place they announce all these big things, and it remains to be seen what they announce after this, but if it's something huge, I would have preferred that just get put in the conference. I, I totally get why companies are trying to run their own conferences and announcements for their own games. They can choose to do it far away enough from other companies so that they're not being directly compared against them. They have complete control of how they want to present what they want to present, but it's just a worse viewer experience. I don't know how to say it other than that it's just not as fun when they're like so spread apart. I think got announced just to watch this one when in reality, like one of the past, it would be one after another and it would be a huge dopamine high and then I come down hard. Now I'm just slightly above average mood always. Ugh. I'm saying I miss E3 in a conceptual sense, not in, in an organization sense. I just want something to be similar to what E3 was for when it was around. I just don't see that ever happening again because the internet's too ubiquitous and it's too convenient for companies to just be able to run their own pre-edited videos and conferences on everything they're trying to release. I love a Nintendo Direct because there's sometimes more than one a year with good announcements, but holy fuck, dude, they started this shit. I could go on for a bit, but that's probably a different video. Let me get into some of the stuff I'm feeling antsy about, but not outright apathy, like I'm at least tentative. The big one is Immortals of Avium. This is a first person shooter where it's whole thing is that you shoot magic and stuff instead of bullets. It seems like as far as what the attacks do, there's a lot more variety. Like in COD, you have 10 assault rifles that the difference between them do matter, but that's because the gameplay is so focused around specifically gunplay. It seems like Immortals of Avium has more attack options, like area of effect, fucking projectiles that have travel time, bullet equivalents and other stuff, yada yada. I was interested in this game because an FPS that can make magic work is very interesting to me, and also because it's a pretty looking game, and it has the number one piece of bait I will fall for, pretty particle effects. I get sucked in by those regardless of if I know the game is good or not. So on a visual level, I definitely enjoy Immortals of Avium, but I, it has a few red flags that make me kind of unconfident in it. For one, and this is hard to tell from just watching gameplay, but none of the attacks look like they have nice meaty feedback. The shooting doesn't look like it's satisfying and the hand animations cover up so much of the screen in what is probably slower than a lot of other shooters, but is still very reaction heavy. And if you're blocking enemies that are coming like where your forearms are, half the damn time, that could be a problem. I hope you can A, pull the FOV back and B, make the uh, hands and animation smaller on your screen so you got more visibility. I don't know if that's a priority. I really want this game to be good. I really want to like it, but I'm just not super confident in its ability to execute. Uh, another thing I am looking forward to cautiously is a new Sonic game got announced. It looks like a classic Sonic 2D game, but made with 3D assets, which is interesting. It seems like Sega has had the most goodwill with these kind of classic Sonic games being made today. I don't know if they got like a fan of the series to do it this time or to lead the project because that's what Sonic Mania was, but it seems like there's some level of community awareness with this game because at the end of the trailer, they have Knack the Weasel from the Archie comics driving around one of Dr. 
Dr. Eggman's nut sacks. And metal nut sacks. They're prosthetics and they cover your entire body. I won't lie, I didn't really get into Sonic from the 2D games, but Sonic 3 I did really like the first few levels of. I was too stupid to get past the second one. I was also playing with a Wii remote and I didn't realize you had to hold it sideways with both hands and was trying to play it like pointing at the TV. <laughs> Regardless, this is one I'll keep an eye on. Alan Wake 2 is another one I'm excited for. It's just, it didn't really show anything that excited me more. I'm trying to play and beat the first Alan Wake before I play the second, because I started it ages ago and fell off it. And now I want to play this one because it looks good. And I want to have finished that first. And honestly, to me so far, it looks like a slower version of the same action you had in Alan Wake 1. I'm sure there's a lot more factors considering it's going full survival horror. You can take the whole flashlight and then shoot mechanic to very different places with that framework. I think. Remains to be seen. I have no fucking clue. I, I hope it's good. I like Remedy games. I'm gonna be honest, I wanted Control 2 more, but it's also a newer game, so it would make no sense if there's a market why they would do that first. Like a Dragon, Gaiden got announced, and if you don't know that franchise, it was formerly called Yakuza. Kuza? I don't know how to say the word, I'm sorry. I in Japan, I think it's always been called Ishin Like a Dragon. It was changed to Yakuza for the West. This is like them recently unifying the brand like Resident Evil has never managed to do uh, in the modern day. It's a series that I've honestly been really intrigued by, laughed at means of, I'm interested in the gameplay mechanics and mini games of. I just suck at fucking starting things, man. And honestly, I just haven't been going out of my way to do a lot of that kind of thing. If this game's a good enough starting point, this might be the one. And if not, maybe I go back to like, like a dragon Ishin Zero. I don't know if that's the title. I have not paid enough attention. I just have a generally positive opinion of the franchise through osmosis of my friends liking it. So, and also, and also through shit post culture, it's made undeniable uh, contributions to it that uh, my life would be worse off without. This is an interesting one. John Carpenter, the guy who directed The Thing, amongst other legendary horror movies, is making a game called Toxic Commando. If you don't know, John Carpenter is unironically a massive fucking gamer. But John Carpenter has talked about openly how much he wants to make a Dead Space game if he was able to. I don't know why EA wouldn't go for that. I mean, they made a stellar Dead Space remake earlier this year from everything I hear about it. And taking your video game licenses and turning them into movies has proven to be very, very profitable recently. It's not total duds like it was when Street Fighter was like the only thing getting adapted. But John Carpenter apparently hasn't been able to secure it, and because he's a major gamer, he did the next best thing and just made his own fucking game. I love that man, both for his work and for his taste. I don't know. I just have to take whatever representation I could get in popular media. Gamers are an oppressed minority. If you play video games, you know this and you feel its effects every day. Remnant 2 is a series that I did not play the first one in, but several people who I was watching the conference in were excited for it, and a few others were saying that, hey, we should play through that Remnant 1 before Remnant 2 comes out. I'm definitely interested in taking that up. It's just not something that I had ever heard of before this. It was described as third-person co-op Dark Souls, but if it's also a shooter. That's a lot of things mashed into one, which makes it seem like a more unique experience than anything else, but it also excites me. Mortal Kombat 1 was generally dopamine-inducing. The animations look good. The fatalities look fun. Potential spoilers for what the first combat DLC pack is going to be. I'm going to let you click off because I am mad that they got spoiled for me. But with how gruesome the fatalities we're getting and how some honestly creative ones were done. The idea of Peacemaker, Omni-Man, and especially Homelander, even though he's arguably one of the weakest out of those three, getting to be in the game is very exciting. They're just brutal characters in their own universes. Putting them in a universe where brutality is the norm is, I don't know, it feels like they'd be right at home. Also, I think it's fair to say that Omni-Man and Homelander are distinct characters from Superman these days, obviously meant to be some type of meta commentary on him as a trope. But at the end of the day, Superman is just a character with, but at the end of the day, Superman, even among different versions of him, those are all individual characters, and Superman has popularly been a single thing for a long time as a character. So some people with his same power sets can stand out, because as characters, they are genuinely different people. Like, I'm sure if a few dozen Kryptonians survived, at least one of them probably would have ended up more like Omni-Man than Superman. Nick Cage in Dead by Daylight is just funny, but fun. I'm still not gonna play Dead by Daylight, but I always appreciate the horror collabs they manage. And Nick Cage is more of an icon Fortnite skin kind of collab, but I'll let it slide. I'm still holding on to hope for Springtrap, but let's be honest, that's never happening, and even if it did, I wouldn't even play it. Final Fantasy VII Remake number 2 got announced. Rebirth, I think, is the official title. I am not super against the idea of taking what is, what, a PS1 game and retooling the entire story into its own franchise, especially with something like Final Fantasy, where every numbered entry is its completely own thing. I'm just not sure how I feel about advertising the first entry as a remake, and then baiting for a full trilogy. It's just, I'm not huge on that, but at least it is a new experience. They're not 
just splitting the original into three separate games. And to be fair, it probably makes it a more worthwhile experience for folks who had played the originals, considering the gameplay's different. Regardless, I'm sure if I played Final Fantasy VII Remake the first, then I would probably be excited for this, but I haven't. I don't know if I'm gonna go out of my way. It just wasn't on platforms I wanted to play it on for the longest time, and it slipped my mind by the time it was. A new Prince of Persia got announced. It's a 2D platforming side-scroller from what I can see. I don't play a lot of those, so I can't tell if this one's looking good or not. It feels like they announced this because the mainline Prince of Persia remake has been in development hell for years, and they recently just scrapped, like, half a decade of work. Twisted Metal is a PlayStation exclusive series I have heard a lot about as I grew up and was honestly kind of intrigued by all the good things people had to say about them. And then I saw the clown whose face I recognized from PlayStation All-Stars, but it's in live action, and he's with Ant and he's with Anthony Mackie, so I'm thinking that they're about to have some e-sex, considering this is a video game conference. Or at the very least, it's a live action trailer that's gonna cut to gameplay, or at least a cutscene soon. And then I remembered a few months ago I had seen that a Twisted Metal series, a show, was in the works. I, I don't know, man. It, it might be good, it's just I wasn't very convinced by the trailer. When Anthony Mackie gets his head slammed onto, like, a casino slot machine, it is the most gentle tap that causes a glass crack I've ever seen. It's just not very compelling. <laughs> it just feels like kind of a slap in the face, even as a newcomer and not a series vet, that after over 10 years of no new game, they do a TV show first. I'd really be interested what the idea behind that was. Like, you don't even know if the audience that played those original games is around anymore to act as a basis for the show's success. Then again, the show could also be the way they're testing the waters. They see how it goes over before they make a new game. I don't know. I'm just, like, not excited at all. Speaking of TV shows that also have video games, Star Trek got announced. It looks interesting, but I don't have any stake in Star Trek, so I got nothing. Yeah, this conference was not that exciting. I won't say I'm disappointed because going into Summer Games Fest, I kind of expected it to be the weakest showing out of everything, including Microsoft, which has, like, no exclusives on the Xbox series, whatever, like, five years on. Even with that, I was able to kind of stomach it, A, because I didn't set my expectations high, and B, because I knew the Devolver Digital show was going to be an hour after it. But yeah, let me know how y'all felt about Summer Games Fest, if you think we'll be seeing anything more interesting from Summer Games Fest as it goes on through the summer. If you want to send topics, hit that quitebox at gmail.com, and yeah, piss off.